Jesus being the center of all worship. Jesus being the center of all worship. The Bible says in John chapter 5 and verse number 22, the Father judges no one but has committed all judgment to the Son of Man. Verse 23, that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. The Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment unto the Son of Man, that all may honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that does not honor the Son, talking about Jesus, does not honor the Father. So, all worship centers on Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, all judgment has been committed unto the Son of Man, unto Jesus. And so the Father judges no one. Even on the last day of the judgment of the living and the dead, it will be Jesus who died for mankind, who will judge men, ladies and gentlemen. So the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 18, no one has seen God at any one time except the Son of God, who is in the Father's bosom, has made him known. No one has seen God at any one time. Of course, we see that God revealed himself to Moses on the mountain of Sinai, and he said, I will not show you my face, but you will see my back. Because if you see my face, you will not leave. For no one seeth my face and leaves. But Moses saw the back, the figure of the back. But that was the Christ, ladies and gentlemen. Because Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15 says, He is the image of the invisible God. The express image of the invisible God. And the firstborn of all creation. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 3, Jesus is the glory of God and the express image of his person. So, when Jesus says in John 1 and verse 18, no one has seen God at any one time, but God, the Son, the Son who sits in the Father's bosom, has made him known. So, the prophets were talking about what God the Son, who is the Logos, the Word of God, the Bible says in John 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was with God in the beginning. Glory to God, there is great revelation there. He says, all things were created by him. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Glory to God. So, Jesus, the Logos, the Word of God, makes the Father known. So, the prophets get the Word of God in the old days, and that Word of God was Jesus, you know, the pre-incarnate Christ. He was the Logos. So, he began to speak about God through the prophets, because no one has seen God at any one time, except God the Son in the Father's bosom has made him known. Jesus tells the woman, and uh, that is John chapter 4 and verse number 22. He tells the woman, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know because salvation is from the Jews. Jews meaning himself. Salvation meaning him as the Savior. Glory to God. Because the angel Gabriel tells Mary, you shall conceive, give back to the Son of God, and you shall call him Jesus because he will save people from their sins. Glory to God. So the name Jesus literally means Jehovah Savior or Jehovah who saves. Ladies and gentlemen, it means God the Savior. Glory to God. So he said to this woman, you worship what you do not know. So all worship centers on Jesus because he is the one that maketh God known. Ladies and gentlemen, he told the woman, you worship what you do not know, for salvation is of the Jews. We worship what we know. That means Jesus is the knowledge of worship. Jesus is the omniscience of worship. Jesus is the figure, divine figure of worship. Is the center of worship. Glory to God. And ladies and gentlemen, I also want you to understand what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 19. The Bible says, it pleased the Father to make all his fullness dwell in his Son. It pleased the Father to make all his fullness dwell in Christ. So, there is one God, and his name is Jesus Christ. Oh, it sounds controversial, but that is the truth. God the Father has, is, has been pleased to make all his fullness, all his attributes, his deity, dwell in his Son. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what the Bible says. God has exalted Jesus to the highest place. Highest place talking about the place of God from man to God because when Jesus came he switched from God to man glory to God you know Jesus came as God and as man and that's why the Bible says he's Emmanuel God with us but also the Bible calls him son of man let that not confuse you he was 100% God 100% man in his earthly days glory to God that's why he acted as a man he prayed to God Ladies and gentlemen, he prayed to God, but also the Bible says he praised the Father, not praying to the Father. The Bible says in John 
Luke 14 and verse 16. If you love me and obey my commandments, I will pray the Father, not I will pray to the Father. So he prays the heart of God. He speaks the heart of God. Glory to God, because he was God in the flesh and he was man in the flesh. Glory to God. Ladies and gentlemen, it pleased the Father, all the fullness of God, to dwell in his Son. That means Jesus is the center of all worship. Now the Bible talks about, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said in Luke chapter number 10, and uh, he tells that the disciples, verse number 22, he tells the disciples that came back, the 72, with a report that even Timon submit to us in your name. He says, all things have been committed unto me by my Father. All things mean invisible, invisible. And then he says, no one knows the Son except the Father, and to those the Son chooses to make the Father known. So it's the Son that makes the Father known. No one knows God the Father. Glory to God. And therefore, worship is centered on Christ. That is so powerful. Worship is centered on Christ. You know the Bible talks about Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, which is going to come down from heaven. In Revelation 21, that city of Jerusalem, the holy city built by God, which is going to come down on a new earth. The Bible calls it the bride of Christ. And that city is going to be the tabernacle of the Most High. His throne is going to be there, the throne of God and of the Lamb. Ladies and gentlemen, so all the nations in the new earth, the nation saints, those who have crossed from death to life, glory to God, they will know that that tabernacle is where God dwells among men in the new earth. And that is the center of worship. And the Bible calls it the pride of Christ, meaning Christ is the center of worship from all tribes, language, nations, race, colors. We see that in the book of Revelation. Glory to God. That is so powerful because he washed them with it. He bought us with his blood from every tribe, you know. Revelation 5 and verse number 10. He bought us with his blood from every tribe, language, race, color. And to God and to make us priests and kings to serve God and reign with him on earth. The new earth is coming. We will reign with Christ. Glory to God. But I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that Christ sent us all worship. Glory to God. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 1 and verse 6, when God was sending his first body to the world, he commanded all angels to worship him, all invisible creatures to worship him, meaning Jesus sent us all worship eternally. Angels worshipped him. And how did they worship him? Luke 2 and verse 13, the Bible says, when Gabriel was talking to the shepherds, delivering them the news that the king is born in Bethlehem, in the city of David, the Bible says, and suddenly with the angel Gabriel appeared the heavenly host, many angels, a choir that sang and said, glory be to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill on men on whom God's favor rests. Meaning, they were rhyming, they were obeying Hebrews 1, 6, when God was sending his firstborn. He commanded all angels to worship him. Glory to God. So if all angels, not some, not some, but all celestial, glory to God. If all angels worship Jesus, all angels, then Jesus sent us all worship, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to God.